Hello, testing. Yeah, All right. Okay. Okay, assalam, um, assalamualaikum. Very good morning to all. Okay, we already have thirty-four uh, students inside, so let's just start again um, the class. I think last week you have you have the semester break. Oh no, not. Oh uh, yeah, last week yeah you have the semester break for for Monday and Tuesday only. Yeah? So this semester we have the shortest semester break. Um, since uh, we need to cater for uh, the final exam before Chinese New Year. Eh? So that's why they actually cut short the uh, Chinese New Year. Uh, sorry, the, the semester break, midterm semester break. Okay, um, so I hope that everybody already download uh, the notes for today, which is we are going to go into chapter 6. Okay, we have basically uh, two more chapters. The uh, next chapter will be on electrical actuator. And then the last one will be on control. Eh? So, um, as usual, please go to uh, the attendance and click on attendance. Go to submit attendance on the date given, which is uh, today is 29 November. And then uh, submit, uh, take present. Eh? Okay, don't take uh, absent, get late. If you are here, then take present. Right? And the, the attendance will only be open in, during the class hour, eh? 8 to 9. Okay, and the next step is Okay, reason why uh, my ULEN is actually a guided you um, guided instruction. So what, how you go through it is that from top to bottom lah. Normally, eh? uh, if you are reading a PowerPoint or a textbook, is you are reading from top to bottom, left to right. Okay, so after doing that, download all the notes given. Uh, I have also sh uh, shared to you the Bolton reference for chapter six on the mechanical actuator. And then today we have the synchronized class. Today and tomorrow is synchronized class. And I hope that by uh, this week we will finish this chapter 6. And also as usual, we have the class activity using Padlet. And also uh, later uh, by today, okay, please do the feedback, uh, fill in the feedback form at this link. Eh? Okay, so let me just share to you okay, this one. Okay, this one is the uh, notes, the, the textbook, uh, textbook part for medical actuator system. So basically, the objective is what as written in the ULEN. So what you will learn is that how to actually determine possible mechanical actuator, actuation system for motion transmission between uh, real, um, when you want to convert a motion from linear to rotary, rotary to rotary, rotary to linear, and even cyclic motion transmission. Okay. And in the uh, uh, telegram, eh, I have given you several links of YouTube, which is I asked to go through yesterday. Okay, the YouTube uh, video is about roughly about four, four minutes, two to four minutes uh, each. And it's uh, basically uh, why I shared one of the video with, which is on the engine mechanism is due to the fact that in uh, engine mechanism, there is a lot of mechanism, okay? So mechanism is mechanical actuator for short, eh? right? So you can just go through these notes. Uh, basically, uh, my notes, which is in the PowerPoint notes, cover everything uh, in this um, PDF, and which is extra, lah, okay? So my PowerPoint notes is extra because I put uh, several links of YouTube, which is, um, I hope that will be useful for student because you know like in this pdf pdf you cannot see the animation eh? the motion of uh, the mechanism so it's kind of hard to imagine it so that's why uh, I, I give you links uh, and all the links are being uh, shared in each topic in my powerpoint right so have you completed the attendance okay if you have completed then right there in the chat yes if you have completed the attendance. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, so now we are going to directly, because we have only one hour for today and tomorrow two hours. So I'm going to, um, maybe because we, uh, and for this slide is, we have roughly about 78 slides. Eh? So 
some of the slides inside of uh, in my notes may be uh, overlapping in several parts eh? because when we talk about for example a uh, crank and slide mechanism uh, crank and slide mechanism and it's actually used in the um, a cap and polar mechanism also in a gym lock so it might be i will later discuss it in one application later on okay so okay the learning outcome for this topic which is chapter 6 on mechanical actuator or mechanism is being mapped to lo2 which is explain the working principle of mechanical system okay and lo3 analyze selection integration of mechanical components okay so um this topic is uh, important. Reason why is that for any actuation system that you're using, eh, okay, the main actuation system that normally used might be hydraulic actuation system, pneumatic actuation system, and last one is electrical actuation system. And all of this actuation system is converting between um, uh, physical, physical, physical output to electrical signal. Eh? So how do you actually uh, translate each of it motion sometimes the motion will be in linear sometimes the motion will be rotary so you might want to use an actuator which is linear but you want to have a rotation a motion which is rotation so this is where the linking the link between um, converting all this uh, motion is being used with the mechanism so mechanism is really important anywhere you will see that there is mechanism in your car Okay, example, in your bicycle, your even uh, your bike, okay, you're riding a bike, you have the chain mechanism. Uh, in your car, you have the belt mechanism. Okay, of course, gearing also in the uh, in the uh, bike, bicycle and bike, and uh, lots of things where you have all this mechanism. For example, uh, at the back here, the fan here also have the mechanism inside. So of course, the main thing when you see a fan like this is that you see there's a, a electric electric motor eh? there's a electrical actuator but inside that if you want to change between the uh, speed speed one two three four okay maybe you will use uh, pwm one of the reason or if you want to, if you want if do you do not want to apply any pwm which is electrical circuit you can always use a gearing system okay to change between the gear is this is where you will see that uh, gearing system is being used in your car. Eh? So gearing is where you can actually um, in increase the force, increase the torque. Okay. So therefore, after completion of this chapter 6, is that you are able to explain the difference of types of mechanism in any system. Okay. And bear in mind that in uh, your final exam uh, later on, Okay, uh, mechanism is one of the topic that is being asked. Eh? So student need to know what type of mechanism need to be used for different situation. Okay, so please take note. Eh? Okay, and second one is that explain the basic operation of that mechanism. Okay, and application of mechanism. Where do you actually apply this mechanism? Okay, so we are uh, still under the actuation system. A block diagram here so we have covered uh, the sensor okay sensor the signal conditioning and then the data presentation and now we are going into the finishing part of the actuation system so we are left with this uh, mechanism mechanical actuator and also electrical actuator okay so this one you can read on your own okay um so Okay, this one I'm going to skip because this is a revision. Eh? So now I'm going to directly go to the types of actuator. Okay, like I mentioned, is that the main one that we have that you will always see us is that what type of actuator do you want to use in, in a system? Okay, do you want to use pneumatic? Okay, why? Why don't you use hydraulic? Because it's using the similar type of system. Okay, so you should be able to explain why you prefer hydraulic in compared to pneumatic. Okay, and so that's why you need to have the pro and cons between these two systems. Pro and cons, why? Okay, maybe because of the budget, maybe because of the specification, you would need to have high torque, high force. Okay, and the last one is the electrical actuator. So electrical actuator, as you know, you have the DC motor, AC motor. This one later in the chapter uh, uh, seven, eh, we will go through this topic. And 
all of these three actuator is actually linked together by the mechanism. So example of uh, the main mechanism that you need to know is this six main types eh, of mechanism. The first one is linkages. Okay, so we will go through one by one. The linkages, what are linkages? Okay, camp and followers. Okay, camp and followers is example of the video that I showed to you in uh, the Telegram group. Okay, camp and follower is being used in the engine block. Okay, where? Okay, so if you have gone through the video you know you know what i'm talking about eh? okay so uh, if you don't go you do not go through the video then you might be asking what is cam and follower okay follower you might know oh follow follow something kan follow something i follow you what is cam okay cam is a, a shape a shape which is when it rotate it will actually make the follow follow what type of shape that the camp is if it's the camp is a circle then it's going to give a, a linear speed if the camp looks like a heart shape then it's going to give a spike up and down so this is where you have it in the engine block okay to for ignition eh? ignition of the engine block number three is gear system so uh, you might want know that uh, gear system is that uh, converting from rotary to rotary. Okay, you want to convert from rotary to rotary. That's where you ge use gearing system. But um, and sometimes we are going to to actually uh, assemble it in parallel. Means that link it together. So this is where you have the bicycles. So you have the six gearing, six gear, twelve gear, and so on. Okay? The fourth one is that rack and pinion. Okay, rack and pinion is something like a um, rack. Rack, if you if you imagine a rack, rack is what? Eh? Kalau bahasa pasta, if you talk about what is rack, what is rack? Uh, my tip says for student, eh, um, maybe from those uh, from polytechnic or not used to uh, English, uh, to english eh, delivery in english for classes at UTEM. so make sure that uh, when i talk in english then make sure if you don't understand that you know we have the google translator so just translate it google translate it immediately eh? okay so um, anyone what is what is rack do you have a rack at your house any rack? Guys? Ada. Ada. Why is rack? Write down in the chat lah. Apa dia? Okay, rack dalam bahasa Melayu apa? Rack. Ah, rak lah kan. Aduh. Susah nak dapat jawapan eh daripada student. Okay. Rak is rak. Rak in, in Malay eh. So, uh, rak. If you, you see rak atau shelf lah. Shelf eh. So, shelf is look like this. Something like this eh. Shelf at your home like this lah. Okay. Okay, shelf. Okay. And you might have it hanging uh, on the wall. Right. So, this is rak. So, this is similar like this rak. And pinion. So what is pinion? Pinion is something that uh, it looks like a gear, gear system. So actually pinion is um, something that when it moves, oh sorry my, my, my drawing is bad. Okay. So when we have this rack plus a gear, so this one it's called as a rack and pinion. Okay. So basically what it does is it's going to convert from linear motion to rotary motion okay imagine that of course you don't have this uh, this wall again for the rack and pinion okay oh sorry okay you don't don't have this wall eh? you don't have this wall under here okay so uh, it's either okay if you rotate this gear we call it as a gear because it's look as gear rotate this gear then what happened is that this rack will actually move up and down linear so this is where you're going to translate from rotary to linear or vice versa okay the fifth one is chain drive so chain drive i think uh, most of you are used uh, to the, the type of what type of chain drive so you have a chain drive in your motorbike in your bicycle yeah? and number six is belt drive 
Okay, bad drive. Where do you have this bad drive? You have it in your car engine. Okay, or you have it in your motorbike. So you have this bad drive. Okay, so uh, later we will go through one by one to get an idea why you use this stuff of mechanism. Yeah. Okay, the, the video of crankshaft is the one that I showed to you, but I'm going to skip that later when we reach that topic, I will show to you again. Okay, so mechanical element example is as I mentioned just now, linkages, cam, gear, ramp pinion, chain and belt drive. So example is that it's used to convert motion. It's either you want to convert the motion from example from rotation motion to linear motion. A linear motion sometimes it calls as a translational motion. Translational motion. Eh? So you, you can see that these are examples of mechanism. The first one that you see here is um, linkages. Okay, linkages. Okay. The second one here is gear. Third one is that bell drive. Okay. And the fourth one is that cam and follower. Okay, cam and follow. So this is what I explained just now. So which one is the cam? Which one is the follower? Okay. okay. So yeah, what is your answer? Cam yang bulat. Correct. Okay. So you have uh, saw the video. So the cam is the circular type shape. Lah. Almost circular but it's not circular. Reason why is that based on the motion of this um, cam, it's going to give a motion to this B. Okay, which is follower. So based on that, it can give this type of motion. It can give this type of motion. It depending on the, the shape of the cap. Okay. So uh, the important is that in a engine, okay, engine driving system is that okay during ignition is that you have this type of spike, and this spike is where the valve will open. Okay, and initiate the uh, ignition eh? so, so that uh, it's going to be combustion okay, inside the engine okay, valve eh? and the next one is that rack and pinion this is one I mentioned just now so you have the rack looks like a rack yeah? okay, a rack and then it's, I have a tooth here all these two and there's a gearing on, on top of here so you can actually convert it from rotary to linear okay and last one is the chain mechanism. So when you're talking about chain mechanism, it's similar like belt, belt mechanism. Eh? Okay. But the difference is that belt is like belt. Tali binggang lah. It's like belt. It's no teeth or no tooth inside. So it can slip. Okay. This is where the disadvantage of pulley system. But sometimes you still need a pulley system instead of a chain system. Chain belt eh. A uh, chain, a uh, chain uh, system or chain drive system, due to the fact that if chain drive system, okay, it's going to have high friction, okay, but it will keep the uh, rotation, okay, rotation. This no, they will uh, reduce the slip, slippage. Eh? For belt and pulley, because you want to reduce friction, and that's why you use a belt drive system in engine, okay. But belt drive system also they have different types of belting system. Later we will look at it. Okay, what type of belting, V type shape, okay, and so on. Uh, and if you see this gearing system, belt system, and chain system, all of these three mechanisms are converting from rotary to rotary. Okay, so if it's converting from rotary to rotary, why do you use a belt instead of gear? Okay, because you can still increase stock by having different dimension of belting system this one okay the, the shelf here and also for the sprocket also so why do you use gear instead of belt and chain any idea or why do you use belt instead of gear any idea biasanya belt ni mahal daripada pada belt pada chain tu mahal daripada belt Okay, chain is uh, more expensive than belt. Okay, that's one thing. But okay, uh, okay. When we talk about belt and chain, it's almost similar. Just that the groove, eh, there has a groove there. Okay, but why do you use belt and chain compared with gear, and vice versa? What is the reason? You can look at the diagram here. Apa bezanya? Any idea? 
secara logik uh, apa pocket ada gigi chain ni je je, je biasa ni tu je apa Okay, okay. That one already explained. Uh, no, uh, my question is that antara belt dengan chain system ni, kenapa you guna belt and chain system ni compare dengan gear? Kalau macam ni, same thing. You, you boleh buat gear, guna gear system juga for this. For this system kan? Because it's converting rotary to rotary. Kalau banyak gear tu macam serabut sikit Okay, that's your uh, reason. Okay, what else? Cepat tumpul Cepat tumpul, okay what else? Uh, not not the uh, the correct answer yet What else? Any idea? Yeah, the top lah sir Belt pun, belt pun ada top, belt pun ada, chain pun ada, boleh increase kan dia, boleh you can change it the the top of force depending on the um, ratio eh, gear ratio, the diameter. On and belt ratio sebenarnya. Okay, tak ada idea. Arah rotation berbeza. Arah rotation, uh, okay. Um, almost similar, gear, belt and chain can actually, you can change the rotation vice versa by having different um what we call it uh, different uh, setting lah okay so in the later slide we will look at how you can actually make one of the belt uh, the the this pulley they will look normally connected to a shaft okay is going to rotate this way and another one is going to rotate this way we can do that by crossing the belting system okay so also same with sprocket also we can do that yeah also of course we can do that by having a different connection of the gear in between okay but um the answer is actually okay be between gear and belt or chain drive system is that is the distance okay gearing system is that the distance is need to be touching each other each from gear one this one gear to another gear it need to be touched touching eh this uh, so basically it would it be uh, normally used when you have a small distance for example your bicycle okay another one example your watch mechanical watch okay you have a gearing system you don't have a belt drive system in your uh, watch eh? because it's very small distance eh? so it's touching basically okay for belt and chain drive system you will see that in your um uh, in the car, in the engine, is that they normally use the belt system because of the distance. Because one of the shaft, at, example, shaft at A here is going to be connected to the engine block. Another one is being connected to the tire, okay, tire shaft. So it's going to rotate. So the the distance is it's not that far, but it still have a distance. Eh? So that's where you will use a belt. Similar what you have on your motorbike, you are using change and also on your bicycle, chain drive system, you are not going to use a gear to actually convert convert your rotation okay, to the tires. Eh? So just take note on that, why you use gear instead of belt and drive. Okay? All of it are actually increasing torque on your chain. Eh? Okay, so I think you can... Uh, Let's look at the video here. Uh, good job. Share. Share. Jake O'Neill, creator of Animographs. And this is how okay. a mechanical... Oh, okay. This one is just a video on how mechanical watch works. So just go to that uh, video later and then uh, this one is interesting okay so me mechanical share Just now, did you see the mechanical watch? Okay, this one. Eh? Okay, this one is the video. Can you 
Can you hear me? Yeah, this one mechanical is watch the works. video of the mechanical watch. So inside of this mechanical watch, when you watch the video is that you can see that there is a gearing system. There are, uh, uh, there are some other mechanism that is being used. For example, um, ratchet and pawl for locking mechanism. So try to go through this video and try to relate it later after we finish chapter 6. Try to find out what type of mechanism is being used in this mechanical watch. Eh? And this one is one more video that I shared to you, which is on a humanoid working mechanism. So it's being powered by wind. Eh? So let's look at the video. Oh, okay. Sorry, it's not that one. Eh? Okay, this one is just a mechanism that they are using Jensen uh, mechanism. Eh? So Jensen mechanism is basically, is being originally powered by wing and what happened is that when the movement of the linkages one linkages and what it will actually cause uh, the other linkages to have motion yeah? so example eh? if you see here okay all of the leg the leg is actually connected to these linkages and these linkages is connected to a four bar link up here Okay, so you just need to connect this part and this part to a motor and this leg will actually move without having additional uh, motor at these uh, joints. Eh? Okay, so you can just go through that and let me see this video. Sponsored by Squarespace. This is how factory noodles are made in Japan. And if you guys have any uh, questions, which is why I I'm... Really Okay, this video, okay, I want to show to you okay, the mechanism that is used in a factory. Okay, Times a day creating okay. About 12 so look noodles. at the, watch the video. Eh? Okay, you see that this mechanism, so these are mechanism. Minutes, okay, what mechanism are being used? For example, this mechanism is moving. Okay, this one is actually flattening the door. Okay, so go through that video also. Okay, right, so you go to the next slide. Okay, that one you can watch on your own, eh, the video. Okay, so uh, what is actually the finish of mechanism? Eh? Mechanism is a system of rigid linkages, okay, element or linkages arranged and connected to transmit motion or forces in predetermined fashion. Means that you are fixing the motion. You want it to have make it into linear motion, then you are going to control. You can design the linkages uh, according to your specification that you uh, you plan. Eh? Okay. So, and mechanism is basically the heart of a machine which consists of linkages and joints. So, it can be uh, additional linkages, joints, and gearing system, belting system, okay, and other types of mechanism. So, uh, normally, if you see, like, example, 3D printer. Have you seen a 3D printer or do you have a 3D printer at home? Anyone here? If your father is actually an engineer or a lecturer, I think you have seen a 3D printer. Anyone have seen how a 3D printer work? 3D printer. Dia saikan dia punya apa ubat dulu baru dia gerak sikit sikit okay. sikit. Okay. How how does it actually move? How does it a 3 print accordingly? Have you really think about it how does it move? By using gear, okay. Uh, Liu, by using gear. Oh, sorry, you, you, uh, some of you answered in the chat. Eh? I didn't notice that. So, I just read through first. Chu, uh, last, uh, just, uh, just now, okay. Chu actually answered correctly yeah, about the gear. Eh? Gear expensive and distance between. Eh? So, that one is the correct answer. Lah, okay. So, um, using gear. Liu said using gear for 3D printer. No. Is actually uh, to move the three D printer head, eh, the one that is printing. You are using actually a lead screw mechanism. So what is a lead screw mechanism? Lead screw mechanism is basically a mechanism that rotate, uh, uh, that give a rotation, convert a rotation to 
a linear. That's why uh, you see that at the side of a 3D printer, there's a motor here and then there's a shaft. That shaft is connected with a, there's actually a lead screw. And then you have the printer head in between. Okay, so what happens is that when this rotate, when this rotate, this head will actually move linear. Okay, so this is what the, 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 the motion that is being converted from rotation to linear. So it's using lead screw combined with electrical motor. Okay, so uh, example here is engine. Eh? engine. And if you see the uh, video that I showed to you, the engine has two main mechanism. Okay, the one is the crankshaft mechanism. Crankshaft mechanism. So basically, crankshaft mechanism is you have you connect uh, this uh, uh, crankshaft here. Okay, connected to a uh, four bar linkages. So you have these linkages, one link, two link, and the at the side here you have a slider. This slider is not actually fixed to the frame, but it's going to slide. By having a guide so this slider is actually inside a guide system and so it's only can move up and down it it cannot actually move left and right and so on due to the this uh, guide keep okay, guide so this is inside your engine here so when it rotate what happens is that it's going to imagine that this is going to move up when it rotate move up and when it rotate again it move down so it's going to move up and down so this is First one, crank and shaft mechanism that we have in the engine. Okay, another one that you have in the engine at the top part here is that. Okay, top part here is later is the cam and follower. Okay, cam and follower. Okay, so um, why do you actually need this mechanism? So the first one is that you need to actually amplify the force. Okay. Example is that by level, red and pinion, okay, you want to amplify it, red and pinion can amplify it. You want to change the speed so you can use gear system or you can use just now belt and belt and change mechanism. Or you want to transfer uh, a rotation or a, a linear uh, translation motion. So you want to convert it from rotary to re rotary. So if you want to convert it from rotary to rotary, basically you have three options. You can use belt drive system you can use change chain drive system and you can use gearing system so basically if the question in a final exam asks you okay and the system require you to to use a mechanism that can actually convert rotary to rotary but also to amplify the force so basically you want to use either one of this okay belt change or gear and you want to explain the reason why you choose either one. So maybe the setup is that it has a distance from conversion from rotary to rotary. For example, in a conveyor belt system, eh? conveyor belt system, you have the, uh, the drive system is a bit far. Okay, So you have the belting system like this. So you want to use a belt drive system. Okay, you're not going to use a gear system. Gear system, it needs to be directly touching each other. Okay, so for the conveyor is that you need to use a belt drive system. Okay, due to the distance. Okay, so. Okay, and um, what you need to know is that there are three, uh, two types of motion, pure motion. The first one is that rotational motion. Okay, rotational motion is the one that you see when it rotates. For example, electrical motor, you give a, a voltage to the motor or current to the motor. And what happens is that it's going to rotate. Okay, rotate depending on the voltage. Okay, so rotational. And translational is what you have learned in the hydraulic and linear actu hydraulic actuator or pneumatic actuator. Before this, most of hydraulic and pneumatic actuator are actually translational type. Translation ni linear lah. Kalau susah nak sebut linear. Linear type motion. Okay. So, um, there are few lah. Few types of pneumatic and hydraulic that is rotational. Like I, that what you have learned before, before this is the vein, uh, vein type actuator. Eh? Vein type is the rotation. But uh, the design is a bit complicated. Okay. So, the most easiest type of linear motion will be 
linear motion will be applied to the pneumatic cylinder, hydraulic cylinder. Eh? Okay, linear type of motion. Okay, so what does it mean by translation motion, rotation motion? So let's see if we have an axis here, y axis, uh, uh, x axis, and z axis. Maybe uh, normally we have z axis on top eh, and y axis here. Okay, if we talk about translation motion, it means that you the motion either is going to move in the x direction, z direction, or y direction. So this is we call it as linear motion. When we talk about rotational motion, is that it's going to rotate at the one of the axes. So you have z here, x here, and y here. So it's going to rotate at the axis here. Okay, clockwise or counter counterclockwise. Okay, so this is what we call as rotational motion. Okay, so and okay, two two pure motion, and you also can actually convert all the motion between rotary to rotary, translational to translational, rotation to translational, and translational to rotation. So, how to do this is by using mechanism okay you cannot use other types of actuator example eh, a hydraulic pneumatic or electrical to do all this converting uh, no it's impossible um, maybe possible but you need to have a more complicated design okay so nowadays we have the most most cheapest mechanism so you can use all of the mechanism to any system okay as long as you know what type of motion you require okay so we go to the first one, okay, which is um, converting between rotational to rotational. Okay, so uh, when we talk about that, is that automatically in your head you should be able to take it, oh for rotational to rotational you have the gearing system. Okay, I just mentioned just now, you have the chain system. Okay, chain drive. You have the back drive. Okay, these are the most common one, but you have also additional how to rotate from uh, rotational to rotation is by using linkages. Okay, so when we talk about this one linkages, then it need a bit more complex design. Eh? so let's look uh, one by one. Okay, so the picture here shows types of uh, bush uh, mechanism that can actually uh, transfer convert from rotary to rotary. For the first one is spur gear, the normal gear lah. Okay, spur gear in your bicycle. Okay, so you have this spur gear. The second one is that bevel gear. Okay. Okay, just a quick question. Where do you use bevel gear? Any idea? Moto, moto, where, where moto, which, which moto, what, uh, okay, maybe my question is not detailed enough. Okay, where do you use bevel gear, in what application? Moto is not an application, eh? moto is uh, actuated itself. So, um, of course, um, gear, you will actually, at the end here, okay, you are going to connect it to moto. Okay, that is normal, we know that, okay, it's going to connect to moto. But, where do you commonly use bevel gear? In what application? Any idea? Dynamo, uh, but yes, correct. You want to convert it. Basically, bevel gear is, okay, if spur gear, you see that uh, the, it's a line. Eh? So it means that if I were to take a view, okay, from this side, eh, for the spur gear, eh, from this side, I can see the first gear is like this, okay? The second gear is starting like this, okay? So this is gear one, this is gear two, gear one and gear two is like this, for spur gear. For bevel gear is that, okay, basically if this is gear one and this is gear two, then uh, imagine that I have the moto over here, eh? moto, okay, moto, okay, this is uh, the, the first gear, okay? Okay, it's connected to the second gear. So, uh, sorry, this is second gear. So, means that it's going to be connected perpendicular. Perpendicular to means that 
90 degree. Okay? So it's converting, changing the direction of the motion. Okay? Changing direction of motion. Means that you want to, you don't want the motion to be like this. Okay? Converting here to here. No, you want to convert, rotate here. You want to convert it this way. Okay? So um, watch. Um, watch, I'm not sure. Uh, kena buka watch kalau nak tengok. But the common one that we use for bevel gear is in robotic arm. Okay. Uh, my student last time, uh, he was designing. Uh, let me find if I can find. Let me see if I can find his slide. Eh. Kejap eh. Work. Uh, wait, uh, wait eh, one minute. Research. Okay, so this is one of my students last time. He already graduate master, eh? uh, Muhammad Azim. Eh? Okay, he he was doing his undergraduate in Japan. Eh? Uh, master he did with uh, the me. So uh, example of bevel gear. Okay, he, his topic was uh, on uh, position controller performance of a two D O F robotic finger propulsion motion. Eh? So what he did was he designed a robotic finger, and then the idea is that to control the motion of the finger, robot finger, in precise motion. Okay. So if you see here, mm, okay. Okay. Can you see this? Okay, this is the construction design of the his robotic finger. So basically, uh, if you look at one of the finger, yeah, this finger, finger C here, you can see that there are two motors. Okay, one each motor are connected to a bevel gear. So this is a motor connected to a gear here. The one in the purple color, yeah, purple color is the bevel gear. This one. All right. So uh, there are two motor. First motor, second motor. So what happened is that because if you see a finger, eh, your finger is actually not moving in this direction, right? If you are uh, actually moving it, you have a gear, you are not moving in this direction, you, but you are moving it in perpendicular, okay? So that's why bevel gear is used inside this uh, project, eh? okay, in this research. Okay, so get the idea where you use spur gear, where do you use bevel gear, okay, for different application. Okay, next one is that worm gear. Okay, worm gear is also a type of gear. Okay, you have the gear one and gear two. Where do you use this? Is uh, mostly we use it in a gripper. So if I, I did that gripper, mechanical gripper. Um, Kejap, I find the video. Okay, this one. Mm. Okay, this one. Okay, can you see uh, the mechanical gripper here? You see that this one is the worm gear. It's connected to this here. So, worm gear tu macam, it's a worm lah, macam worm kan? Uh, this worm is going to move and connect to another gear. So, what happens is that you, are going, you can actually open and close the gripper. Right? So, that is worm gear. 
And next is that friction roller pair. So basically, if you have this type of roller pair is basically to actually um, a very direct, it's similar like a gear system but without the tooth. Eh? So you might use this but uh, most of the time people don't use this because of uh, less friction. Eh? Uh, it People might want to use a better uh, uh, set of mechanism which is uh, belt type and chain drive to ensure that there's no slippages. Okay? And uh, the rest will be crank rocker double crank rocker also uh, this one crank rocker and double crank is actually type of linkages we will go through in depth later eh? okay so you can go through here Geneva will what is it so try to search in YouTube because it's static uh, photo eh? it's a bit hard to actually imagine how it works eh? okay I go to the next one which is translational to translational motion so basically to, to T to T so we have the first one is cam and follower and also linkages. So cam and follower is uh, divided into two types. Eh? We have the wedges uh, cam follower type, okay, uh, which is in perpendicular motion. Okay, also similar like this, but you see here that it's in wedge type. Okay, so what happened is that when this cam is rotating, this it will give motion to this uh, follower okay left and right similar to this but depend on the the uh, follower uh, the follower shape yeah so it's going to give different type of motion okay this one is a wedge cam follower skew type okay so um, and the linkage that we see here is um, this oh, not this is here this is cam and follower also yeah so a cam and follower is in a um, is in a guided part so what happens is that when this move up okay it's going to actually uh, pull this part to the right side and when it goes down it's going to move it to the left side so it will actually move vice versa eh? we call it as reciprocating motion okay and a double skew type motion will be a type of linkages so uh, this one uh, you can see it example in for example in in your car okay the hood of the car when you open it okay so this one will actually move left and right and this one will move up and down okay the hood of the car or your trunk eh? okay the third one is rotational to translational rotational to translation motion okay so we have first one is also the cam Okay, it's going to convert rotational to uh, translational, which one, which is this one. Okay, linkages. Okay, this one is an example of linkages, which is slider cram mechanism is linkages. Uh, six bar dual linkages. Okay, um, where do you use this type of linkages is that this three part is being fixed at the ground. And what happens is that this table is going to move vice versa. So where do you use this? Example is in simulation. Simulation of um, a cockpit. Eh? Cockpit, simulator, aircraft simulator. So they want to actually uh, make the... Okay, if a pilot... Uh, recently during, during PKP, eh, there's no flight going up. So how do you... They want to maintain uh, that... Uh, the, the, their, I mean the drive during... Uh, before or during the PKP, eh? So they have the simulator. Simulator is that basically is replicating the real world situation. So uh, you imagine that on top of this table is actually the cockpit of the cockpit inside the cockpit. And inside here is that it's going to move based on the, the direction that the pilot drive. Eh? So uh, for example, last time eh, I actually joined, uh, um, there's a ma mass, eh, mass, mass. They actually have the cockpit simulator, which also embedded sensor inside. So basically, if you are inside that cockpit, if you crash land, uh, crash, eh? if you crash that, okay, uh, I was in the cockpit when they try, uh, they, uh, we tried to land the, 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 the plane eh? okay, in the cockpit. But of course, I don't have, I didn't actually took a driving license for that uh, airplane. So we crash land, <laughs> crash land. 
So basically, we can feel the tremor, vibration. Eh, it's really, it's feel like, I feel like dying eh, inside there because it's really have vibration. Okay, like a quick vibration there. Okay, so this is where you use this type of linkages okay, in certain application. Okay, uh, and you have the red opinion. So this is red opinion. Okay, converting from linear to rotation. Okay, also you can use screw type mechanism or we call it as lead this screw or ball screw so basically when you have screw means that basically it looks look like it's a screw and at the end here normally you are going to connect it to a motor 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 will going to rotate the screw and the screw is going to actually uh, at the side here is that it's it's actually loose eh? so when you move it it's going to move left and right depending on what uh, what uh, value uh, input value that you give okay so this part will be moving left and right means that linear motion and this part you can actually connect it to any table or application eh? okay so go through this um, video Okay, the first video is on planetary gear. Okay, if even though in this rotary to rotary, I didn't show you the planetary gear, but this one is added value. Okay, so go through that planetary gear video. Okay, and also go through this one, understanding your car steering and power steering. Because later we will go into detail on it because some of application mechanism is being used in this car steering and power steering. Eh? And for power steering, we are also using the hydraulic actuation system. Okay, And later, okay, go through, if you haven't go through the YouTube video that I shared in Telegram, go through also this, how does the camshaft work. Eh? Okay, And uh, this one is example of uh, mechanism example this one is really good for you to actually go through yeah this um, youtuber okay they have actually make a several design in SOLIDWORKS, work i think or autocad and what he did was actually to just show to you different types of mechanism for example if you want to search in here his page yeah you just search here for example um worm screw uh, worm gear sorry worm gear okay so basically in his part he has the worm gear application so you can see oh okay worm gear rotating and wrestling motion okay or you want to see a worm gear being used to drive a system in linear okay so you see that but there's no sound lah. so you can see that there's a worm gear inside here Okay, it's connected inside here, the, the loose part, okay, the movable part is inside here. So what happens that the motor, if you connect it to the end of the worm gear, then you can actually move it. Okay, rotate it from translation from rotary to linear. Okay, so this um, this is really interesting. Eh? So you can go through this page. Eh? Type. The example of uh, mechanism here and see if you can find the uh, video link. Eh? Okay, and think, uh, I think that's all for today because it's already 854. So make sure that you go through the link that I shared to you in um, in Telegram. Eh? Okay, um, look, watch this, uh, not this video. Oh, yeah. Oh God. This video, eh? Uh, it's funny. Okay. Okay, watch this video. Okay, about the engine. Maybe it's old school a bit, but uh, it's uh, really um, lots of info there. Okay, uh, about this ap mechanical application, eh? let me just share my... Um, okay, I'm going to share... 
kita share content include audio share screen okay so this is my handphone where's the application okay okay this one Right, so if you see here, one of the apps that I, uh, one of the apps there is that you open this one. Okay, so if you see here, this one example is a full stroke engine. Eh? Okay, and it's animation. It's really interesting is that it gives you X-ray view inside. So you can actually, I'm actually zooming here, here inside. So you can see that uh, there's a force row engine inside there, okay? And then you can see that all of it is connected to a shaft here, down here and connected to the wheel. So if you want to see, for example, eh, the engine, okay? So it's going to show to you the, the engine part, eh? The cylinder. It will give you the x-ray of the inner part. Okay, this one is where I want you to go through the video that I shared in Telegram and also in this app. Okay, this app shows basically that we have the crank and shaft mechanism. Crank and shaft mechanism is down there, okay? Down there, which is the rotating thing part. Uh, the four cylinders moving up and down. And we have also the cam and follower at the top part there, at the initial part there. So, and you can see that also you have the, uh, what type of drive system? Is it a belt drive system or a um, chain drive system? What do you think? Okay, uh, belt drive, eh? Yes, it's a belt drive system with a V-type belt drive. Okay, and look at how it's being connected. All of it are being connected using a belt drive to the camera follow up on top. And also to the uh, crankshaft below. Eh? So all of, the, of it are connected. And you cannot use actually, um, what is it? You cannot use a gear ring to actually because uh, to convert the rotation. Even though this, this rotation is uh, rotary to rotary, but it's not uh, really appropriate to use gear ring system here. You are going to use a belting system in the engine part. Eh? So go through these um, apps. One of the apps that I think is uh, interesting to actually download. Um, and then, uh, I think this one, mechanical, this one, yeah, mechanical engineering. Eh? Oh, not this one. Eh? Sorry. 3D engineering. Oh, yeah, this one. And this one is that. V6 and, V6 and V6 engine, engine, refers, engine refers to V structure, to v structure of engine, engine with six piston cylinders. cylinders. In intake, in intake stroke, stroke the piston lowers in the cylinder, sucking air through okay. intake valve while fuel injector simultaneously Basically, sprays fuel into the okay, cylinder. It's it's in compression stroke, everything. the valve and, uh, close and crankshaft moves the piston up, compressing fuel air mixture. You can see the inner in power here, stroke, you want to the spark the plug sparks, so igniting the fuel air mixture. And it's not only on that video, eh? Okay, if you go here, you can see that there are a lot of um, types of uh, mechanism they show. For example, this one is steering wheel. Okay, the steering system. Power steering helps so the driver of a vehicle to steer by directing eh? some of so its power to assist. Try in to go through this application. I think this application... How do you do health? It's really interesting for this topic, eh? mechanism. Okay, so... Other than that, make sure that you go through the slides that I've shared and don't forget to complete the feedback form. Eh? Okay? Uh, any question? Feedback form is open. Eh? So, any question? No, eh? Okay, no. Okay, if no question, then thank you very much. Uh, that's all from me. So, see you guys tomorrow at 9. Eh? So, Assalamualaikum very, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye. Terima kasih, Dah. Okay, sama.